have to adhere to. Now, at the bottom of page 352, I want to read to you two bullets. I'm going to read this to you. You ready? ADA exempts the following two properties. Property that is covered by the Fair Housing Act. And the second bullet point says property that is exempt from coverage by the Fair Housing Act. Holy crap, that sounds like everything, doesn't it? Somebody confirmed to me, I literally, well, this is the first time and the only time you're gonna hear this from me and we're gonna get it on record. I don't know what the hell they're talking about. The only thing I can say is I'm glad I've got my license already. <laughs> I literally do not know what they're trying to tell you here. I actually have sent emails to Dearborn, the publisher of the book, to find out who wrote this chapter so I could contact them. And I've, I've not made any headway. Property that is covered by the Fair Housing Act, which already prohibits discrimination, and property that is exempt from coverage by the Fair Housing Act, such as HOPA. That sounds like it's exempting everything. The only thing that I can think of that would be exempt from the Fair Housing Act and the ADA would be a property that is not for sale. And at that point, who cares? Because we wouldn't be involved in that anyway if it's not for sale. I, I, if I ever find out what's going on, I'm going to be happy and I will be sure to tell everybody, but I'm not entirely 100% sure on what they're trying to convey here. Now, some properties are subject to both ADA and the Fair Housing Act, and those are the two we just mentioned. A real estate brokerage, a property management company, those have employees, consumers come in, and we deal with housing. So I can see some businesses or properties being covered by both, but none of them that I can think of not covered by either one. All right. Are we good so far? All right. Now, in this fair housing, one of the other things that kind of bugs me, and I want to go back to page 349, and this is just me. On page 349 is the poster for the Fair Housing Act, all right? One of the issues I have with the Fair Housing Act is you are guilty until you prove yourself innocent, which is completely goes against our theory of innocent until proven guilty. This poster is an example. If you fail to display this poster where you do brokerage, you are automatically assumed to discriminate and therefore are in violation of the Fair Housing Act. So the fact that you don't actually tell people you don't discriminate, you by their law do discriminate and are guilty. Not posting this poster is a $500 fine if the HUD comes into your brokerage and finds that you don't have the fair housing poster posted, you are guilty. Well, Chris, how often do like does like HUD do like audits on brokerages? HUD has what they call testers. They will literally send people in and ask you or call you, or now maybe they'll email, I don't think so. I think they do it either by phone or in person. They will literally come in and test your brokerage or your property management company. They will send somebody in and say, hey, I got, I saw your ad, do you have any properties located? And you've got to tell them, yeah, we got, you know, one, two, three. And then they will try again using a different class of person coming and go, hey, did, did they tell you the same three? 
because if they didn't, maybe they were discriminate. They didn't tell the Jewish guy about the house in the Catholic community. And then the Catholic guy comes in and says, hey, I want to do that. And they show him that house. They will try and test you. They do it all the time. All right. So there are testers that come in. So this is an example of one that just kind of personally bugs me. I don't discriminate. I should not have to tell you I don't because that's what a true professional would do. And we're supposed to be working like professional under our code of ethics. But yet if I fail to post this poster, it's a fine. So I'm actually guilty until I prove myself innocent. Now, obviously, as you can tell, we are not in the classroom today. But if we were in the classroom, I would point to the poster on the wall and show you that I actually have this poster posted in the schools just because they want us to. Uh, now, I don't broker out of the school, but the reality is I put it up for the school purpose and to show other people. Now, remember, even though you guys are out in the field and you're closing at a title company, technically, you're still brokering out of the office in which you are assigned to. So your office will have this posted. You don't need to carry a poster with you. Some people actually put the little housing logo with the equal sign in the middle on their business card. I've seen that little icon down in the corner. They'll maybe put the MLS icon and then they'll put the fair housing icon. I've seen that when you order business cards, you can get those put on your business card if you'd like, but your brokerage will have it posted usually in the lobby of their office so that when consumers or customers come in, it is posted, all right? Now let's jump back to page 353 and talk about some of the illegal activities that were going on. These are illegal activities. The first one is called block busting. Block busting. Block busting is panic selling. It's defined as panic selling. Panic selling is when you incite somebody based upon a fear to get them to sell, typically for a profit. All right. When this first happened, they nicknamed it the white flight. Because what unscrupulous investors were doing were going into predominantly white neighborhoods and telling people, hey, the so-and-so people are moving in and it's going to lower the value of your home. You better sell today. And by the way, I've got cash with me. And they were inducing a panic for the sole purpose of creating a profit by buying the house low and then reselling it. It's called panic selling. HUD calls it block busting. All right. The next one, steering. You cannot steer a client towards or away from an area based upon one of the seven protected classes. All right. My second day as a licensee, I worked at a company called Caldwell Banker Kaiser. No, I didn't. Caldwell Banker Monon out of Broad Ripple, Indiana. They are not even gone here anymore. They're, they've left. And matter of fact, the managing broker is now, now actually a state representative in uh, Minnesota. He went back home. But I was standing in the uh, office and this Hispanic guy comes in. And he's like, oh, I'm like, oh, no, como esta? And he's like, oh, yeah. And I speak enough Spanish to probably order a beer and get slapped. All right. So I, I'm talking to him and he says, hey, I want to live with other Spanish speaking people because I don't speak English. And I said, OK, let's go to Washington and Belmont and we'll find you a, a house in that area. Anybody ever been to Washington and Belmont? It is a heavily Hispanic area. Even the grocery stores and all of the businesses are in Spanish, but here's the problem. 
he's like, okay, let me go out, get my wife out of the car. We want to look at some of the properties. And he walked out and Andy Noble came back to me and goes, dude, what are you doing? I'm like, what? He's like, no, you've just violated fair housing. You cannot guide a person towards an area based on their race or national origin. I'm like, but he asked me, but he's like, it doesn't matter. You, meaning me, you don't know that that's a Hispanic area. You're using a prejudice because of the signs and all that, that you're assuming that's a violation. So the guy come back in, I'm like, hey man, I, I'm sorry. Um, and he's like, well, what do I do? And Andy stepped in and goes, here's what you do. I want you to go to the Hispanic consulate, go down there and do your data research and come back to us and tell us where you want to live. Now, geography is not protected. Matter of fact, that is the number one thing we search on, right? Oh, I wanna live in Watermaker, I wanna live in Speedway, I wanna be on the north side. So geography is not a protected class. So the guy leaves and says, look, I don't wanna get anybody in trouble, I'm gonna leave. And as he leaves, I turn to Andy, I'm like, dude, you killed my first customer. He's like, dude, I just saved your ass from a lawsuit. So about three weeks later, this guy walks in and he's like, oh, I'm like, oh, come on, stop. And he's like, I wanna to go to Washington and Belmont. And I turned to Andy and go, da da. And he's like, yeah, but still, he now told us where we wanna go. So we went to Washington, Belmont, and within a mile radius and found him a, a house. You cannot steer a person towards or away from, even if they ask you, because you literally don't know. I made a racial profile by saying Washington and Belmont was heavily Hispanic because I drove by and I saw a bunch of uh, signs in uh, Spanish. Even if they asked. Yes, sir. I was going to say, so in that situation, if you would have been like, well, like the area by Washington is fairly diversified we could try there first would that be like an alternative nope you're still staring because you picked the location you but steered I mean, him towards that based on his race so i mean indianapolis as like a whole is like considered like steering or i would have to be like a particular no, neighborhood done. if think. you said let's go to washington east washington or 38th and lafayette which is another big hispanic area and said, let's go in that area because it's fairly diverse. That is steering. You steer him towards that location based on what you presume is a diversified area. Now, if he came in to you and said, hey, Cameron, I wanna live on 38th and Lafayette because I think it's diversified, and you go, okay, I'll take you to 38th and Lafayette because that's a geographic region. If he came in and said, where all the Catholic people live. I want to live there because I'm Catholic. I can't do that. I don't know where that's at. If he says, okay, I want to live at, and I'm just making this up, 46th and Meridian because there's a Catholic church there. Okay, I can do that because you told me 46th and Meridian. I don't so, know there's a Catholic church there. So the customer has to tell you location. You can't say anything about it. You cannot steer, all right? Even if they ask, if they come in and say, hey, I wanna live with all of the Catholics. I don't know where that's at. And I can't certainly tell you where that's at. Because if I do, I am steering you based on your religion to where you want to be. And that's what Andy told this guy, he said, I need you to go to the Hispanic consulate. You do your own research where the heavy population is and then come back and tell us a location. That's fine. Now you've come back to me and said, I want to live at Washington and Belmont because I believe, I being the customer, I believe that's where a, a, a heavy concentration is. Another good example is you guys know where Homecomings is? It's right there at Main Street on the other side. Yeah. 
heavily populated by the Indian culture. But you certainly, we all know that. You can drive in the area and probably seven out of 10 homes are of the same nationality. But if someone said, I want to live with other Indian culture, you can't go, well, let's go to homecoming. That's steering. Now, if they said, I want to live in that housing addition on the other side over there, okay, I'll take you over there and we'll find a house. Because geography is not protected, but the religion is, or the race, or the national origin. Even though we may think that, you can't do it. Even if they ask you to, that's what this gentleman did. He said, look, I don't speak English very well. I want to live in a Hispanic neighborhood. And I suggested Washington and Belmont. And Andy said, no. But he asked, it doesn't matter. I can't help you on that. I don't know where the Hispanic neighborhood is. I don't know where the Catholic neighborhood is. 